What's up, Vape Fam? Today, we're taking a look at a new tank. The Freemax Scylla tank? I don't know how to pronounce it. This tank was given to me for the purpose of this review, so thank you very much for the opportunity to review this tank. Um, I hinted at it a little bit in the Vapey Time vlog, so we will go right ahead and get to the good stuff with the up close and breakdown to see what makes it vape. Alright guys, here we are up close with the Freemax Scylla tank. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm calling it the Scylla tank. Uh, this is the packaging it comes in. On the side of the box are all the different coils and their wattage ratings, along with the fact that it comes with the RTA section and one coil. The color, and then on the bottom you have the contents and your scratch and sniff. It is a nice little magnetic front flat box. The first level of the box you have your tank, we're going to set that aside for a second. Underneath that is your instruction booklet. Uh, it does tell you how to take apart the tank for cleaning, how to fill it. Uh, it even shows you some wicking techniques on the back here for the RTA section. I will show you that in a moment. It is a really interesting RTA section. Uh, I have tried it. I'm looking forward to putting some really weird builds into it. So, we'll put that aside. Underneath that, I'm just going to pull this all the way out. box is empty. Move that to the side. Underneath that, you have a piece of extra glass. You have two screwdrivers, which I will show you why in a moment. You have a little bag of O-rings. You have a little bag of cotton. Actually, decent cotton, too. Over on this side, you have your RTA section, and underneath it, you have some replacement posts and replacement coils along with the O-rings needed for the RTA. We'll get to the RTA at the end. For now, we will go ahead and take a look at the tank. So the tank. Starting at the top, you have your drip tip comes right out then you have your top cap top fill uh, to take the top or to take the top cap out to fill it just push down do a little quarter turn counterclockwise and pull up that's it you have this nice deep top cap in order to pour juice down into or to use your glass dropper in or a unicorn bottle. The top cap itself, as you can see, has these two little pieces that protrude to fit into the grooves here in the top cap. Uh, it also has two little gaskets to make sure that the uh, fill ports are sealed when it is closed and in place. Put that aside for a second. Next we will take our base out. The AFC ring you can hear is nice and clicky. really really nice I really like a clicky AFC ring just unscrew the base coil and base we'll set that down for one second uh, this part the top cap and the bottom do come apart just unscrew them like so there's the top cap that way you can replace your glass and that leaves you with the little cage for the coil. Set these aside. The coil obviously just screws right into the base. This is a pretty hefty, well-built base. Everything on this fits together really well. I mean, it's really, really smooth. The threads, really nice. That AFC ring, really, really nice. It does not protrude enough on the bottom that I would run it on a hybrid. Barely protrudes at all. Have some nice engravings there on the side. 
of the base as well. So let's take a look at this coil. This is the ceramic coil here. And as you can see, it has tiny, tiny little juice holes. I was astonished that this actually wicked up and that it performed under high wattage. Uh, it does use wire. You can see the wire there. And the wire goes in and heats up this center part, which is actually the ceramic. Now, on the very outside, if I can get the light to shine right, uh, it has this tiny piece of cotton that runs around the outside of the coil. Just one thin layer of cotton, and everything else inside there is the ceramic. Honestly, it's been a very, very good coil. It's performed really well. I was really shocked by it. It does say ceramic here on the side as well as have the wattage range listed directly on the coil itself. We also have the Clapton coil. Now the Clapton coil has normal side, normal size juice holes. Uh, it is Clapton down inside. This has a lot of cotton in it. Let me pull this wire out real quick. Give me one second. All right, so here you have it pulled out all the cotton. There's still cotton in here. There's a lot of cotton in this coil. I'm going to set it aside for a second. We'll take a look at the wire. Pull this cotton off of there. As you can see, there's a fairly good section of it that is clapped and So it is indeed a Clapton coil. It's actually a really nicely done Clapton too. It is not actually welded on the end, it doesn't look like. Like some of them, they put the wire on and they put these little tack welds on the end. So with that, let's take a look at the RTA section. Okay, now the RTA section is really, really weird. You have these two stacked up juice flow holes on either side and as you can see down in there I've got this one wicked up I have fired it a few times I actually used the build that was in here and wicked it up I pulled the cotton through the coils cut it and then used a screwdriver from the outs or put the cap back on used a screwdriver from the outside to push the cotton towards the juice holes to block them off it's worked very very well if we pull this cap off it just pulls straight off You'll see a giant mess of cotton. Let me pull some of that out so you can get a better look at this. Alright, now as you can see, this comes with two stacked coils in it. I'm going to go ahead and take these out. There's two Phillips head screws on the top. That I somehow got really, really tight. There we go. And there we go. Take the screws all the way out and make life easy. There goes the top coil. Now you take your second screwdriver that came with it, the flathead, and you put it down in here. This is really, really tight, but these do come out. They are threaded. that will release your second coil. So these little extension terminals are actually a threaded screw, as you can see. So you will use the flat head on these to hold down your first coil, and you will use the Phillips head on the top to put the screw in to hold down your second coil. You can see the airflow comes right up through the bottom, just like so, through here. And I'm looking forward to putting some really interesting builds in this thing. So with that, we'll put the tank back together, juice it up, and we'll go from there. 
Alright, so putting this mess back together into a tank is really easy. Screw your coil into your base. Like so. The glass goes back over this cage. The top cap screws back onto the top of the chimney. Like so. This whole assembly screws over top of your coil onto the base. And then you can fill it up. Now obviously if you're using a new coil, you want to prime the coil. This one is the same one I just pulled out of there. And I am going to be filling it up with new drips on the block, steep by steep. It is like an orange sucker and it has been awesome. So then you just put it there, and fill her up. Just put a couple squeezes in. Like so. Take your top cap, pop it back in, give it a quarter turn, and put your drip tip on. And that's all there is to it. So let's take it back up top, talk about it, and we'll vape it on a little bit. Alright guys, that was the up close and breakdown with the Freemax Scylla tank. I still can't pronounce it, still don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, so this tank, when it was given to me, I opened it up, I looked at it, and before I even noticed the ceramic, I noticed these tiny little juice flow holes on the ceramic coil. And I thought, those aren't going to wick. They aren't going to keep up, especially at the 160 wattage range the coil specifies it maxes out at. And I was wrong. I was really, really wrong. Uh, I put 70, 30 in this, and it kept up just fine. I've tried 80, 20 in this, it kept up just fine. I've had this all the way up to 210 watts, and it kept up just fine. I didn't get dry hits, I didn't get burnt taste, it just kept firing. I ripped on this thing. I mean, just kept on beating on this coil, and it just kept up really, really well. Now, these ceramic coils, you do actually replace, so that's something to keep in mind. This is not the ceramic coil that you just re-wick and go. So the coil heads themselves retail for around a normal coil head price so you're not losing anything there. And the quality of vape I've been getting off this thing has been awesome. Just awesome. It's at 150 watts. No dry hits. Good flavor. Good vapor production. It's just, I've really been enjoying this tank. The top fill method, where you just push down, give a little quarter turn, pop the cap, squeeze your juice in, pour your juice in. I mean, it's deep recess, so you can literally just pour juice down in there. I've tried it. It works. Uh, it is a little bit tall. I think it's a more appropriate height when you take the drip tip off, but, you know, that's just cosmetics. That's personal opinion. It is really well machined. Everything fits. It's nice, clicky airflow ring, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, the airflow is a little bit tighter than you are going to expect, judging by these giant Cyclops airflow slots, but it's still a decent vape airflow-wise. Um, it's not too tight. It is a little tight. It could be a little bit more wide open. I think it'd be a lot more enjoyable at the 150 watt range. Uh, it does hit a little bit differently than you're used to. So. At 150 watts, it's more like a 100 watt kind of vape because the coil itself is heating up at 150 watts and that heat is dissipating out in the ceramic and then the ceramic is applying heat to the cotton. So you are losing a little bit of heat from the initial coil all the way to the cotton. But it's really smooth, it heats the cotton up evenly, so it gives you this really unique vape. I've tried the Clapton coils. The Clapton coils were good. I still prefer the ceramic coil. Uh, around the 50 watt range is when I had a decent vape off the Clapton coils. Uh, that is the max rating on them, I believe. I believe they go up to 50 watts. Now, this tank I've seen on Vapor DNA. I could not find the price listed on Freemax's site, so I apologize. 
uh, if it is on there and I missed it. So I don't know the actual retail price. I saw these on Vapor DNA for thirty dollars. I'm guessing the retail price is going to be somewhere around thirty-seven to forty dollars. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm estimating that one. Uh, so you can find them on Vapor DNA, thirty bucks, probably a little cheaper somewhere online. Uh, but the retail is normally a bit higher than them. Now, we also have five of these to give away for our 500 subscriber giveaway for our monthly giveaway. So, so this time we are going to do it a little bit different. We're going to extend it out because I wanted to thank you guys appropriately and make sure you all have a chance to enter into the giveaway. So this giveaway is going to run all the way until the end of the month. The giveaway video will go up on the 31st of March. Um, so we have five of these and we're going to hashtag Scylla. S-C-Y-L-L-A. I think it's pronounced Scylla, but it's hashtag S-C-Y-L-L-A. And that will enter you into the giveaway. So go ahead and put that down in the, the comments section below and you will be entered for a chance to win one of these tanks. You must be 18 and over. You must be 18 and over. And you must be a subscriber because this is a big thank you for my subscribers. So uh, with that in mind, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, I hope you know you enjoyed the breakdown. I want to thank you guys again for your subscriptions, for your likes, for your comments. Uh, like, subscribe, it helps me out. If you have any questions, anything I didn't address, you can leave that in the comments below too. Uh, just remember to put a hashtag Scylla in there to get entered into the giveaway. Uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Till then, keep on vaping.